Welcome back to Recapped Films. Today, I am going to explain a South Korean action and thriller movie released in the year 2019, titled The Gangster, The Cop, The Devil. Spoilers ahead, so watch out and take care. An unknown man is spotted following another man's car at the beginning of the movie. He purposefully collides with the car, causing the driver to get down and take a photo for insurance purposes. Suddenly, the unknown man repeatedly stabs him in the back, and he dies due to blood loss. A police officer named Tai Suk and his assistant are driving to the crime scene the next day. He notices thugs in front of a slot machine shop and searches the area before getting down to teach them a lesson. Meanwhile, the place's owner, Jong, a gangster boss, calls Tai Suk's boss since he has bribed him not to interfere with his illicit enterprises. When his boss learns of this, he summons Tai Suk and demands him to inspect the crime scene right away. Tai Suk discovers a car collision mark at the crime scene, which leads him to the murderer's motives. The police officials in the office are debating the murder case because the victim's wallet is missing. They assume the case is a robber murder. Tai Suk claims that the perpetrator is a serial killer. He connects it to other similar style murders that have occurred in the neighborhood in recent weeks. Despite his allegation, he lacks sufficient evidence to back it up. As a result, his boss prevents him from entering the investigation, but he remains committed to finding the killer. Zhang, on the other side, is meeting with his rival, Sang Do. The rival plans to invade Zhang's domain and open his own gaming establishments, with the possibility of collaborating to grow their business. Zhang is aware of what he is doing and declines the offer. He is driving home by himself after the conference. The serial killer wrecks his car's rear on his way home, but Zhang decides to let the man go because his car is in good condition. The killer stabs him in the back as he is ready to get into his car, leading to a battle between the two of them. He is repeatedly stabbed, but he manages to stab the killer in the chest once. He chooses to run after seeing Zhang's might and hits him with his car. He drives to a rural region and kills a local old man, dissatisfied with his unsuccessful attempt. Meanwhile, Zhang has been admitted to the hospital as a result of the event. When his soldiers learn about it, they assume it was Song Do's fault and invade his home. As a result, the anticipated brawl between the two gangs occurs. He claims that the killer is not Song Do's man after waking up, and he orders his men to find the killer's car. When Tai Suk learns the news, he goes to Zhang and interrogates him about the incident. Zhang denies his assistance because he doesn't want anything to do with Tai Suk. He intends to apprehend the offender on his own, taking matters into his own hands. Tai Suk searches for Zhang's car after the meeting and discovers a car collision mark, proving his assertion about the serial killer. The killer is back in action at night. He kills a truck driver and then flees with the car. The driver's pal is in the back seat. He chuckles maniacally as he prepares for his second kill of the night. During the process, his knife falls to the ground and is later discovered by Zhang's men. The next day, Tai Suk pays another visit to Zhang, this time pleading with him to cooperate. Finally, they reach an understanding. They determine that Zhang will provide the staff and funds, while Tai Suk will oversee the investigation's abilities and equipment. He had previously commissioned a painter to create a portrait of the killer, and the sketch is detailed enough to allow them to do a search, thanks to his excellent memory. Zhang tells his men to kill his rival, Sang Do, using the killer's knife that they had discovered before searching for the killer. To transfer the responsibility to Sang Do, his men purposefully leave the knife on his body. Tai Suk, who is aware of the situation, accuses Zhang of murdering Sang Do and confronts him. Despite their agreement, they get into a fight, but Tai Suk is vanquished on his own. He intends to capture the killer first, then incriminates Zhang later as a result of their struggle. Both he and the killer attend Song Do's funeral the next day. The killer informs Song Do's man that Zhang is the one who assassinated their boss. The killer finds another target on his way home and kills him in the same manner. Apart from the fact that he feels happy after killing a man, he has no motives or patterns in his homicides. In the meantime, Zhang's men have located the killer's car. 
Jong and Tai Suk dig into it to see if there's anything that can lead them to the killer. Following their search, they are attacked by Song Do's men, who intend to kill Jong as a form of revenge. Despite their overwhelming numbers, they both defeat them all due to their disparities and fighting abilities. The fingerprints of the killer were discovered during the inquiry, and he was correctly identified. They check his home but are unable to locate him since he has fled. Fortunately, Tai Suk discovers his photograph and uses it to plan a search. Jong's and Tai Suk's men are organizing a full-scale search at the headquarters. They convey the plan to Jong's men and send them out into the streets once it is finalized. They visit hotels, markets, terminals, bars, and internet cafes, among other places. Despite their efforts, the killer is yet to be discovered. Jong meets Tai Suk at a bus terminal the next day. They encounter a high school girl there as well. They find out that the girl they chatted to has been killed by the killer while she was resting with the others. They take to the streets once more, this time with the bus line as their new leader. They were able to locate the killer's residence this time. The killer, however, recognizes that he is being pursued and drives away. He is followed by the cops, hot on his trail, and thugs, and a protracted car chase ensues. After some time, Jong and Tai Suk corner him and cause his car to crash. The killer, on the other hand, has fled and is responsible for the death of one of Jong's men. Jong arrives at a karaoke bar after following his blood trail. He walks into the room and slams the door shut. His body weight holds the killer down while he is being beaten mercilessly. Then he snatches him away and takes him to a place where he would be tortured. Tai Suk appears out of nowhere with his car and collides with Zhang. He apprehends the killer and transports him to a police station. The killer is finally being tried for his crimes. He consistently denies the charges, claiming that there is no direct evidence of his murders. Zhang enters the courtroom as a witness and the solitary survivor of the attack. When the judge begins to believe he is innocent, he discloses that he has a face sketch of the killer to back up his evidence. He can also recount the episode in detail, backed up by the wounds left on his and the killer's bodies as a result of the knife struggle. The killer is sentenced to death, based on all of the direct evidence. Jong, on the other hand, is in prison as a result of his illicit businesses and other offenses. He has apparently agreed to give himself in if he may be held in the same facility as the killer. Finally, by the end of the movie, Tai Suk and his men are promoted as a result of their success in solving many serial murder cases. Jong also enters the prison with a broad grin on his face, knowing that he will soon get his revenge. What are your thoughts on this film?